Hello, 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 everyone. Close your eyes. We are adjusting things. Hey, look, you're probably going to be able to see my face today. We shall see. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Let's zoom in a little. Nope, there goes my face, all gone. Whoops, sorry. Can you see my pumpkins? Ta-da! Oh, son of a gun. Sorry, guys. So sorry. Spent all that time messing with it only to trip over it. My apologies. Oh, my goodness. I feel horrible. There we go. Back to the pumpkins. This thing is going to be important in a little bit because we're also going to work on the stripology ruler if I don't trip over six things along the way. Oh, my goodness. I have nowhere to tuck my microphone cord, which I've been calling my microwave cord all afternoon. Hello, hello. Hi, Della. Hi, Ellen. Glad everybody can see. See, I have all of this extra microphone cord that I normally tuck underneath my sewing machine mat, but today I think I'm just going to hang it on the tripod. And hopefully it won't make too much noise. Because when we start cutting today, I definitely don't want to cut anything with the stripology ruler. Just got the message, what, that we were going live? My cats are starting to wake up. They're like, oh, uh, yeah. Mom's talking to herself again. Whatever works, right? I've got myself all miscombobulated. I hope everyone is having a nice week. So I have this part here that I go ahead and tuck and clip into my shirt so that it doesn't come disconnected because you know me if you've been here for a while you know I'm gonna get tangled on something there we go we'll just do it like this wrap it around the laptop for now since we're not cutting anything ha 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 there we go Hi everyone, hello, 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 from wherever everyone is. Hi Kim, hi Giovanna, hi Susan, hi Ellen. Oh, Casuvel, oh. Nope, you haven't been here in a while, have you? I totally forgot your normal everyday name, sorry, Linda. I turned the ceiling fan off because sometimes it makes a sound like I'm in a wind tunnel. So I went ahead and turned it off and I tell you with all the studio lights on and everything, I'm already hot. I'm already hot. Uh-oh. My YouTube is spinning. Uh-oh. I hope that's not all of us. Well, it's not my phone, so that's all that matters, right? Hi, Peggy. Jody made it. Oh, that bracelet's making too much noise. I was actually ironing fabric because before we can use a stripology ruler, we have to have our fabric ironed. Everything is working. Thanks, Linda. I appreciate hearing that. We're good. Everyone's good. Whew. Deep breaths, everybody. All right, here's another little spiel. I stopped saying it, but to all of those watching the replay, I hope everyone understands that this is a live stream, which means it's happening live right now. You may be watching the replay, 
but it already happened live. And during a live stream, we like to chat. We like to stop in the middle of a conversation and switch wheels, switch wheels, whatever. Go to another one, chitter chatter along the way. And sometimes we get back to the original conversation and sometimes we don't. Barrett, oh, thank you. I'm like, I was going for Bev, Bess. I was close, but I, oh, I really appreciate you letting me know and not sending me evil thoughts because I forget everybody's name. Because you guys know if you've been here for a while, I forget my own name. I forget my own name. We're going to wait a few minutes since it's only just 3 o'clock. Make sure we have enough people coming. And then we'll start working on pumpkins and we'll start chatting. Because I have so many things to talk about. And I told Jody, I told you guys on the Whip It Wednesday that this was going to be a short live stream. And she says, I say that all the time and it's never short. So let's see what happens. You know, some of the times it's my fault, but other times I say, hey, is that it? Or do you guys need to see something else? And you're like, yeah, let's keep talking and see something else. So I'm blaming Jody. I think Jody's got big enough shoulders that she can handle all of the blame. What do you think, Jody? Can you handle it all? South Carolina where it's raining. I've heard the Carolinas are getting rain. It is all your fault. We're in our dry season now. We don't get rain unless we have a cool front coming through. And we had that last week, so we won't see any rain for a bit. But it was enough rain that it looks like I need to mow the yard this weekend. It looks like the yard's growing. Well... It looks like the weeds are growing taller than the grass. The grass doesn't grow that much, but the weeds are growing. Oh, can you see my chair? I'm, I'm just spinning in my chair. I have to sit still. It is your fault, Jody. How could, it can't be my fault, right? It can never be my fault. I'm trying to get my laptop so I can see everything. Yeah, we can blame Jody. Jody doesn't mind. Who else? Let's see, who's not here? Because we can blame the people that aren't here, right? Okay, so I've been watching a lot of YouTubes. Uh, I always watch the like TubeBuddy and how to improve your YouTube channel and stuff like that. So let's let's do the YouTube thing. So hey everyone, thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like videos like this, could you please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, because that really helps my channel out and it lets YouTube know that hey, people like to see what I'm doing and listen to me ramble on and on. And you know what's really good for my channel is pop on one of my move on one of my videos when you can't sleep at night and my droning voice that rambles on and on just tends to put people to sleep. I'm very relaxing and calming and not stressful. Thanks, Giovanna. Oh, Kathy's not here, so we're gonna blame Kathy. <laughs> Poor Kathy. I'm sorry, Kathy, whichever Kathy you might happen to be, but Jody's decided it's all your fault. Can't blame, nope, Tracy's here, can't blame you. You're good. You know, sometimes it just, when you know it's about the same people that you're chit-chatting with or you just get in the groove and you tend to forget, plus it's like begging on the street corner for 50 cents for coffee, which you can't get coffee for 50 cents anywhere, I don't think. But it's like, can you please, if you like me, when you wanna be my friend, could you please subscribe to my channel? I just like it when you guys watch my videos from beginning to end. And a lot of you share my videos. I get a weekly performance review from YouTube and they're like, okay, so many people shared your video, so many people watched it. And it's like, you guys share my video. So thank you so much, I appreciate it. Oh, we can blame Giovanna too. Ooh, I think I need my drink over here. I don't know what I did, but I all of a sudden got dehydrated. Like, I didn't even go outside. I didn't sweat, you know, didn't mow the yard, didn't do anything crazy, but I got like super dehydrated. And now I feel like I'm constantly playing catch up. Hi, Heather from Canada. Okay, Watson, welcome, welcome. We're so glad you can hang out with us come and hang out with us today on a live stream. I've been tripling up on my water. I had a Gatorade yesterday, just trying to do anything I can. I have a squeaky chair to get back up to where I'm supposed to be. Hello, Laura Lynn from Arizona. I've been watching the weather in Arizona, of course, because you know, we're really curious about it. 
still a little bit warm there but it looks like your temperatures are going down little by little oh giovanna chatterboxes unite you know chatty kathy i was always told that i was like the chatty kathy doll because i can never stop talking but i have a lot to say sometimes it's important and sometimes i just have a lot to say especially if i've been alone for a few days and like nobody's talked to me much and i haven't done many videos or anything i will get all of a sudden very chatty you have to bear with me because oh, I shouldn't do that on two of my fingers today i have like a contact dermatitis sort of kind of uh when i touch like raw potatoes and stuff and if i don't wear gloves the skin will either break out or it'll crack like when you get really really dry skin in the really really cold weather with snow and stuff like that and people get cracked fingers and stuff i get that from touching certain foods and stuff so i have to have band-aids on two of my fingers and i feel like it's really got me like i can't use my hands exactly susan i appreciate that because sometimes especially with mine they're like you have to have a script and i think i'm going to start needing to make like a timeline not a full-on script because sometimes i forget things and i have to backtrack and say hey five minutes ago you should have done this or i'll put a little note at the bottom or put in an extra video part of it or, or something but yeah you never know when i'm just going to open up my mouth and give like the tip or trick that was so important to you that you you had to hear it and it's a game changer or something and i feel the same way when i'm, I'm watching other videos i don't want to miss anything all right you guys are giving me crooked neck i have to bring you over here there we go hi costanza from england i don't know why i said it that way my tongue got stuck in my mouth it's hot for autumn. We had we had 58 degrees overnight the other day. It was like totally shocking. We don't normally get cool weather until after Halloween or it teases us just before Halloween. So I was like, wow, it was gorgeous out the other day. Even when it's 85, when there's no humidity, it's really nice. I'm just moving my pumpkins all over the place. These are pumpkin kits that I purchased at a craft store for $4.99 for the fall of 2023 and you can make six of these pumpkins now my pumpkins look kind of funky but their pumpkins look kind of funky too so i don't feel bad at all yeah everyone seems to be having like crazy you either got snow early or it's still hot so what I was thinking as I was making these, I, I can get six of them for $5. So that's like 80 something cents each for them. You get the chenille stems for it and you get all the beads. And I'm pretty sure there's gonna be extra beads because it says it comes with a hundred, nope, a thousand and eight orange beads. And I divided it by six and I definitely didn't use as many beads as they said for each of my pumpkins. So we have the chenille stems, or us old-fashioned people will call them pipe cleaners. Oh, I remember cleaning my grandfather's. He used to smoke the Lucky Strike with no filter, and he had that little filter thing on the end of it to make it a filtered cigarette to pretend like, you know, smoking is healthy. I remember having to clean that with the pipe cleaners, and oh, how nasty that tobacco was and sticky and everything. That was so gross. I mean, if you want people to not smoke, give them a chore like that, and that's just so gross. So it does give us a little directions on the back. The basic idea is, is to put the beads on and add on your stem and the little green part there, you know, no big deal. So we'll go ahead and make a couple of these, and then we will work on the stripology ruler because I ironed a whole bunch of fabric. I put a link down below in the bottom of this video in the description box to uh, the original designer of the Gudrun, it's GE Designs. It's Gudrun Erla, it looks like, because it's right on the ruler that I'm looking at right there. She designed this tripology rulers and Creative Grids uh, manufactures them, I guess. 
and she has a couple videos. Part one is linked down below and it shows you how to just cut the strips. And then part two shows you how to do the diamonds and all the fancy stuff. <laughs> all right, Jody. Bye-bye family. Can't talk now. We're on a live stream. Nope. I'm just rambling. I am giving it a little bit of time before I start dropping all the news about what's going on with YouTube and Arizona and 2024 and all of that stuff because I've really been thinking about this and I've made some decisions. Isn't that scary? Now, in my life, I make decisions and then I kind of try them out and it doesn't work and I readjust. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, that we can try something. And if it doesn't help us, that we can go ahead and do something different. But before we get going, I want to show you this one orange bead. Make sure I'm not connected anywhere. Excuse my band-aid, but oh, there's a light. It came with a little green bead on the inside. I know that's blurry, but there we go. I thought that was the cutest little thing because there are no green beads here, but the pumpkin has the green stem and all. So it had that cute little thing. Almost reminds me of like an olive with the pimento on the inside. So I'm saving that. I'm gonna take some of these beads out so that it's not so noisy. But let me get this piece of fe uh, felt, this batting I have sitting here. Cause when you're working with beads, hi Lori. Oh, welcome, welcome. Oh, you, I appreciate that. They're funky pumpkins, all right. I'm gonna tell you a little trick that I might try afterwards to make them a little bit rounder. But if you're working on any type of beads, if you lay down some type of a mat, something that's gonna stop the beads from rolling, whether it's a piece of batting, a piece of felt, they have the fancy beading mats and stuff like that, but we're doing pony beads, so it doesn't really matter, you know. Hi, Becky, welcome, welcome. Becky is Bays, right? Because we went through this whole bee thing earlier and I kind of got myself in, well, I didn't get in trouble, I'm being overly dramatic, but you know. I was going down all the bee names. So this way the beads don't roll around. And if you're really making teeny tiny seed beads and you're working on fancy jewelry and you're selling them for $80 and stuff like that, you might want something fancy. Yes, I got it. Hey, I probably ask you that every live stream too, only because I second guess myself in everything in life. So you can spend the money on something expensive or like what we do with our design boards, you can just go ahead and make your own thing. So here they are. Now it tells us to take bundle four orange stems, two, so you have to learn how to count, three, R, 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 four, R, R, R. That's how the count counts. All right, so I have four of them together. Now you can do this without this kit. <laughs> Thank you. You can do this without the kit. Don't worry about it. You, the directions are real simple. You can kind of make it up. So it says I need four of them, and then it says to fold in half, twist stems together in the middle to secure. So I'm guessing that you're supposed to fold them in half this way and then give this a twist, and that never worked for me. Washing ashtrays is super gross. Yes, ashtrays were horrible. I smoked for a little bit because I wanted to be part of the cool crowd in high school. Yeah, see, that's what it is. Yeah, uh-huh. The count. Well, you know, Scooby Dooby Doo is in there too. But what I did is I took one of them and I kind of just twisted it around the center that way. And then I took a different one. I don't know if it's the same one. And I twisted it the other way just to have them twisted in the center to hold it together. I think that time I got the same one. And then you're supposed to spread them out into, what do they call it? A starburst, is that it? Yes, a starburst shape. I called it an octopus, but whatever. You've never gotten a beading mat? I played with these once today and I had them all over the table here. I'm also, uh, my fingers and hands don't work very well. I think the arthritis is finally set in. Because if I put a little Voltaren gel right through here, it stops all the aches and pains in my fingers. So I'm pretty sure based on all of our crafting over the years that it's gonna be common for most of us to have a little arthritis in our hands. Plus it's a common thing when you're older. Okay, 
Then it says to put the orange beads on. These are just your basic everyday pony beads. I don't know if there's a specific size, but they just look like regular pony beads to me. Spider, yep, anything with eight legs, right? I'd rather have an octopus than a spider, though. This house has a lot of spiders, by the way. It's crazy. So then we're supposed to put the beads on and fill them up to where they're an inch away from the end. So for those of you that didn't know, from your first knuckle to the tip of your finger, that's generally an inch. So if you measure it out, it's pretty darn close. So I was considering from the knuckle to the tip an inch, and then I took off one extra bead. A flat dish or tin, a plate, a serving tray. Yeah, I've seen them do the like cookie sheets and stuff like that, Lori, all of those things work. That's why I say I don't see why you need to buy a fancy mat unless you're getting like an entire kit that comes with everything. I don't see that the mat and the cost for it. I don't know how much a beading mat costs nowadays, but if it's over $10, I, I think I would just go ahead and create my own. Wait, an octopus has 10 legs? Giovanna, no. Don't they have eight? Oh, no. Well... Mine's orange, and I don't think octopus, octopuses are orange anyway, so mine can have eight legs. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill these on. You just take it and you put them on like this. You can go ahead and dip down. I found that if I just grabbed the, what was I doing? I, was, I tried putting a handful on, and that didn't work, so I would just try to grab two, a paper plate. But this bandage on my thumb, I just don't want it to crack open and bleed because you know if you don't want it to do it that's when it's going to happen the pumpkins I don't really care much about because worse comes the worst I don't do anything with it I didn't have any plans with them anyway but I don't want to bleed on the fabric when we're cutting it later so I'm going to fill up one I discovered that from a quiz the other day perfect timing huh I filled up one and then I did one of them one leg at a time and then the next two I just put like I don't know half the amount on each leg and then I went back and put the other half on because it made it feel like I was accomplishing more that way. So I'll just show you what I mean about filling it to the top. Now what we need that, that last inch for because it really doesn't matter if it's an inch or two inches or whatever we need to twist all these together at the top so that they stay together and then, oh, scorpions, yikes. So they'd stay together and then we put the, the little vines on and the brown stem. I have a black light in my, a black light flashlight in my Arizona wish list on Amazon because you can see, they say the scorpions glow when you put a black light on it. So when I hold my finger here, the tip of the chenille stem is there and then the last bead is right down there. When I did the first pumpkin, just doing that one inch away, actually it needs one more bead to be, oh, that band-aid's annoying, to be there. So it's just about one inch at the top. So then I just went ahead and I took this extra bead off and it gave me that little bit extra room to go ahead and twist everything together. And then just to make sure nothing falls off, even though it's kind of not tight, but pretty secure on there. I just bent the end of the chenille stem up because with my luck, as it happened, some started falling off. So then I went through and I just sat here and I'm watching some YouTube and stuff like that and having imaginary conversations in my head while I did this. So let me tell you, Giovanna, it's just a crack in the skin there. I was making homemade french fries and stuff and I wasn't wearing a glove and when I touch raw potatoes it's part of my latex allergy that the proteins in the raw potatoes make my hands break out or it could just be from dry skin and the when I got dehydrated the other day but I'm pretty sure it's a it's a contact dermatitis allergy type thing because I also have it on this finger I put neosporin on them all the time and with the scorpions? No, I won't have any scorpion issues in Arizona. This one right here hurts so bad. I have to clip my thumbnail all the way down because I get it a lot. I have to clip my thumbnail all the way down because the thumbnail pushes on with a part of your skin of your thumb that comes over the top. So no matter how short it is, I have to cut it down to nothing because it just pushes on it because the, the tear in the skin is right here. 
It's one of those ones you see on the commercials in the winter for like O'Keeffe's when they tell you, you know, they've got cracked skin and stuff like that. So that's what it looks like. All right, so here is my big news. I decided to take a little bit of a break from YouTube. I know, it's crazy, huh? I've pushed through so many times. And I, okay, first I had this argument in my head where some of you said, but Robin, you had a break with the hurricane and Robin, you just had a break with moving, but I didn't have a, a real break break. And I feel myself I feel myself getting physically worn out and I know if I don't take some type of a break that my body is going to shut down and I'm going to find myself in bed for a week or two and I really don't want to do that and I can't afford that right now. So here's what this break is going to mean for you guys. It's really not that big of a deal. I'm still going to do the Whip It Wednesdays. I should probably tell you the other reason for my break. The second reason for my break is with the holiday season coming up, I'd like to put more things in my Etsy shop. I've been wanting to make the cell phone, um, the cell phone uh, little drawstring bags and stuff. I've been wanting to make them since before June. I have the fabric pulled aside. I have the pattern all cut out and everything. I made a tester and I haven't been able to do them. And I just, I'm running out of time. I'm working from eight in the morning till nine o'clock at night sometimes because I'm walking through jello and mud and sludge like I told you guys. The passage of time, I just feel like I've been in this house for nine months already and it's been June, July, August, September, October, four months. So time is just really a issue for me right now. So I wanna get things in the shop and I think in the future, I'm gonna do the same thing like every September or October, just so that I have time to get things done. My girlfriend had cracked fingers. She would put liquid bandage on her fingertips, helps, yeah. No, no, hold on, Jody. you're not gonna miss me. I'm still gonna do Whip It Wednesdays because I'm gonna be sewing stuff for the shop and I'm still gonna do my Patreon videos because they're financially supporting me that way. And I think that, you know, I should still do my videos there. Plus we're doing quick projects. Now here on YouTube, I'm still gonna do my two live streams a month because I don't have to necessarily do a big preparation for that. It's those Friday tutorials that are slowing me down. Sometimes it takes me three days to prepare, make the video, edit it, get it uploaded and all of that. So those are the days for some reason that I just feel behind all the time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a pause on those tutorials. And that way it's gonna give me that extra time to put things in the shop. And what I was thinking is even though my room is not the prettiest for Whip It Wednesdays, when I do the face-to-face -face videos, I tend to be more chatty and talk about more different things and talk more about the crafts. So if you guys don't mind looking at my messy bookshelves here where nothing looks pretty and nothing's colorful, I'll go ahead and I'll do those and then you'll have a nice big chunk of a video and then we'll have the two live streams. I do owe you a dog bandana video, so I wanna make sure I do that so that anyone who wanted to make them or make them for gifts will have that done. But I, I just, I need the time to get things in my Etsy shop and I need the time to sleep. I, like I said, I'm for some, no reason. I, I'm like, it's nine o'clock at night and I'm still sitting here at this table working and I'm like Robin Suzanne, cause that's my middle name. When I'm in trouble, I call myself Robin Suzanne, just like my parents did. I'm like, you gotta get your act together, girl. You are going to crash if you don't do something. So that's what I'm gonna do. I didn't get things in the shop for Christmas last year because of the hurricane, so I wanna do that. So, and also, boy, we're talking Etsy stuff. Thank you guys so much for grabbing those fabric scraps. We're gonna start cutting some more today for the novelty bundles that'll be going into the shop. So I think what might happen too is just like with the live stream. Now you're going to see this and then all of a sudden all these tutorials are going to pop up. <laughs> I, I, I know me. When I say I'm not going to do something, then I always find the time to do it. So who knows what's going to happen. That's why I say I say this now and it could change. 
Yeah, I mean, it's not messy, but like when you see the videos, you're not going to see my crumb curtains. You're going to see stacks of plastic containers. My, my shorts and my t-shirts are all over here behind me. They're nice and neat. The, the mini quilts that are left on the wall after the other ones all fell off. So there's just like, there's a quilt here and then there's a quilt over here and then there's a quilt over there. It looks like someone crazy tried to decorate this room. So I don't have a quilt to hang up to make the backdrop look nice. So you guys are just going to see what you see. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. I, I just need to do something. And I'm working on a knit project for a Christmas gift. And I just, I haven't had, I haven't touched it in two weeks. I just knit two rows on it in the last couple days. And I need to get it done before... I need to get it done in time to mail it out, you know, so that's what's going to happen. So if you don't see a video, a tutorial on Friday, don't be afraid. It, nothing horrible's happened. You can check in with me if you want, but I'm just doing my thing. And I don't want anyone, I, okay, I want to fill my Etsy shop and I want you guys to purchase things because I love when my things go out into the world. But when there are sales in the Etsy shop, it takes me a while to get everything packaged up to put it, make sure I, I lint roll everything, make sure I closed up the hole in the zipper pouches and tote bags. So you guys, yeah, I, luckily, you know, knock on wood, I haven't sent one out that was open that I'm aware of. At least nobody told me. So I, I do all that and I package it and I have to weigh it and print out the thing, fight with the printer because my printer does not like this house for some reason. I don't know what the deal is, but it doesn't like it here. Yeah, I need to take care of myself. I have to admit that, hey, you know, sometimes we have to do what we have to. And then I'm going to totally use 2024 and Arizona as an excuse. And we are going to change this channel up next year. I've been watching the analytics. Now, with the Whip It Wednesday videos, it's hit and miss, but a lot of the times, the majority of the views come from at night, like after 6 p.m. So I wanna change my Whip It Wednesday videos to post in Arizona at around 6 p.m. that time. So I don't know what that time's gonna be because Arizona, at least in the area that I'm in, I heard like one area might still do daylight savings time, but I'm not sure. So they don't do daylight savings time. So sometimes it's one time, sometimes it's another. And we're just going to have to figure that out and Google it and stuff like that. I need more beads. And go from there. But I'm thinking of putting that out and posting it at night to see if it does any better at night than it does you know, in the morning, because they're saying like, if your videos, if most of your viewers are on YouTube at this time, that's when you should post your videos. So I want to see about that. And I want to actually, okay, this is going to sound funny even to myself. I'm telling you now that I need a break because I'm doing too much, but next year I want to do more. <laughs> if you've been here for a while, you remember we used to go live on Saturdays and or Sundays or whatever till I wanted to have the weekends off. Well, now that it's like just me and the things are a little bit different and I've rearranged my schedule and my routine, I don't do things just on the weekend anymore. I actually find it better to do some videos on the weekend versus during the week. It just seems to work out better for me. And it kind of looks cool. So I want to go live, do the live streams. I was thinking about doing them on Saturday mornings. What do you guys think about that? So you guys watching live and in the replay, if you let me know, what do you think about doing it Saturday mornings again? We used to do them at 11 a.m., but that would be 11 a.m. Arizona time. So I'm not sure what that would be wherever you are. Now the Arizona and the West Coast people will be happy because it'll be at a normal time for them because 3 p.m. on Friday was nice, but a lot of the people that work and everything, they couldn't come live when they wanted to. Yeah, we'll be in a better state of mind. There's still the, it's still hovering over us about, we're getting closer now. Like any minute we can be told, okay, you can move. And then I have everything lined up, but then it's like, okay, it's, it's like, I was telling the kids, it's like when you're pregnant or someone you know is pregnant and like they're going to have the baby. So you're prepared ahead of time. Then it's like, it's go time. So then we can go ahead 
and put everything in motion. So I don't know if it's going to take us a month to move or if we can move in two weeks or what. But so we got holiday season coming, you know, the new year, and then somewhere in there is going to be a move. And it's like, it's just crazy time. So that's another part of my, you know, a little bit of insanity here that I need to figure out what's going on. I need this and I need this. And I didn't plan ahead, so excuse me while I'm rude. No, wait, where's that container? Nope, I'm not rude. I can do it right here on my marker. I need to twist my green stem around it to make a vine. Yeah, so I was thinking we go go back to going lives on Saturdays. And what that means is if we do tutorials on the live stream, I can take that tutorial and put it on the Friday before the live stream or after however it works so that we'll have that tutorial but I keep wanting to do more and more yeah Susan if you guys want I mean and I always put it down in the comments I pin the first comment and I put an older video but I did that like when we were moving and stuff like here's a quick little two minute video but here's one you can watch down below I don't know if you guys need that now or if you want to just go and watch stuff I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do it depends I might I might videotape me sewing one day like working on one of the pouches and then just put it you know a little bit of music to it because that's what you do or just let the sewing machine run kind of like that sound and I know some of you guys do too and then put it down a comment down below and say, hey, you know, watch this one while I'm doing what I'm doing. But there's so many things I want to make, even though when it comes time to do a tutorial, I'm like, duh, I don't know what to make. What should I do? So I was thinking, are you buffering? Or are you talking about Buffy the Vampire? I, I'm looking good here. So I think that buffering might be on your end. Nope, we're good. So that way we can have, we can go back to having the four, you know, the four or five Fridays a month. And I want to zone back in because I have lists of stuff that were either requested or things that I thought up along the way. And I want to zone it back in. And I want the live streams also to go back to, hey, let's just pull out some fabric and sew today. and We'll make what we make, you know. So I'm thinking if we do the live streams on a different day, like on the weekend, and we do it in the morning, because let me tell you, you guys, I can't do it at night. I, it's 100%. If you all gather together and demand and beg and plead, I will do a nighttime live stream, but I am not intelligent. You think I forget my own name now after 4 or 5 p.m. after the end of a long day and dinner and stuff? I'm just tired and falling asleep in my chair. I can't do a live stream. I don't have the energy. I'm so well organized. I'm good to move. I'm ready. If you tell me, Robin, pack up. We're leaving in two hours. I can pack up my room in two hours. I have everything's ready. I've got the boxes. All my stuff's still in storage. The kids are a little iffy. When my daughter came home, let me just stop here for a second. So we need to take all of these and somehow we need to put them together and twist them at the top. What I did is to help with the pumpkin shape, I went ahead and bent all of these up like this. And then, so what do we have? Eight of them, right? Eight, yeah. So I started just taking like two of these and giving them a double twist tie. Make sure your beads are all down. Because when I tried to put all eight together, it was crazy. I could not get them to do anything. You know, I feel like whenever I come on here, I should be doing something intelligent, something teaching and stuff. But I really just kind of like to hang out with you guys and chat. I don't want to always be teaching something, you know. So the kids, I made my daughter go through and she cleaned out her closet and got everything packed and moved stuff because she has like a book collection and all of that. Then I just bring these all together. Oh, that one didn't stay twisted. One. Come on. There you go. And so I made her get everything packed. So that was one of the things because I'm like, girl, I, oh, that one's not staying either. I did all that work at my house and I got everything all organized and I purged and I did all of that work and then twist it. 
I said, I'm not doing it here. I did clean up some of their garage and went through several boxes and stuff. But there's these things that they have to go through and decide what they're keeping and what they're not. You know, it's not my stuff. So the kids, Robbie's room, he, Robbie's good. He can pack up himself also too in like two hours and be done. Oh, good. I'm so glad it stopped. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate everyone when they come back and check out the replays because it feels like it. you don't want to miss out being part of it and you want to hear everything. I usually, I used to have to watch the replays because my internet couldn't handle the lives, but it just feels like a whole different energy when you're there part of it live and stuff like that. But, it, you know, if you can't make it, you can't make it. So you, we do what the best we can. Robbie has clothes and computer stuff, so he can be packed up instantly. Justin's bedroom, I was in there yesterday. He basically has a couple of his um, stitch things that he's been collecting, like a couple Legos and stuff. And he has his clothes and his bed and stuff. So it's really more about getting rid of the stuff you're not going to take. The kitchen we've talked about over and over. Now you're supposed to just put this on here, but I went ahead and I used this to go ahead and twist. I know you can't see with my hands, but you get the idea. I used this green stem to hold all those oranges together. And then you just take this and you twist it around a pencil or whatever. I liked it really, really tight. So I have, I have Lucy Goosey here. And then I have this one that's really, really tight. And I like this tight version better. So then you pull it off and you do the same thing with this one. So the kitchen, there's a lot of things that we're just going to put to the curb and let people grab for free when we leave and stuff or ahead of time. I'm in some free groups here on you or there on YouTube. Nope, on Facebook. So I'm just going to leave them out of the way for now. Well, you can pull them down a little bit if you want and decide where you want your vines to go. And then we're going to wrap the brown one around it. So we're going to do a lot of that and there's only a few things we're going to pack. But I think for this house we need a couple days to get it done. So it's going to take some time. Yeah, Jody, I think, you know, Saturday, we'll try Saturdays. I'm really flexible. It's not like, I mean, this is my job. So yeah, you can use a knitting needle or a crochet hook. You can use any, you can wrap it around your finger if you want. Whatever you have that's round, a wooden spoon anything like that. If you want it really tight, the smaller it is, the tighter it'll be. And if you don't, I mean, if you want, there's usually like only one or two tendrils coming down off the most pumpkin decoration things. So, I mean, that's good there. But I think we can definitely get this house packed in a week because it's not just packing the house that's the problem. It's getting rid of the stuff. Like we're not going to take all the plastic Tupperware that has all the burn marks in it from the microwave. I'm not paying to move that cross country. We've already decided, like for me, the, I already know the kitchen's going to be set up like this is mom's cabinet and mom wants the glass containers with that, like the rubberish cage around it. So when you drop the glass, it doesn't break. And Mandy wants just glass containers and Justin prefers the plastic ones. So he wants the plastic ones and Robbie doesn't use them. So he could care less what we have. Yes, Becky. I don't know. I was watching something and, and people were saying, why are you talking to it? I'm like, I watch a, I watch a live stream or a recorded video from eight years ago the other day. And I was talking to the person and I was cheering them on and I was pointing and I was just clapping and having a good old time. And my kids probably thought I was crazy because I've been here long enough that I'm not going to hide anymore. I'm going to let my true Robin self out. <laughs> So some days I sit here and cry all day and other days I talk to myself and my kids just shake their head and roll their eyes. Oh, Jody, it wouldn't take very long. I take two crochet stitches and I'll be crashed. We can do some surprise ones and some extra ones if you want to do a nighttime. We just can't do anything really planned. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's for a lot of people in the other countries, it depends on what time it is. But I was thinking maybe if we did it at 11 in the morning on Saturday, like England, I know, is five hours ahead from Florida. So 11 o'clock in the morning in Florida would be what? 
four in the afternoon, depending on what time of the year it is and all. So you guys are just going to have to put it in and say, what time is it in is Arizona for your time zones and then figure it out. All of these orange things up here are pointed and then there's some that stick out and stuff like that. So what I did is I put the brown over the top and bent it a little bit. And this, this way, when I twist around, I'm gonna cover that brown pointed end. Cause you know, pipey cleaner, chenille stems do that. And I'm pinching the top and I just kept going and I don't want anything to kind of stick out. So I just did this little twisty thing and then I bent it and I twisted it around some more. And I kept, they say to cut off the extra, but what am I gonna do with the extra? Just throw it away? Will it alert us via email for your surprise lives? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I'll wait some time. If you're part of, if you're subscribed to YouTube and you have your notifications on, if you do the little email thing that I have down below, it will email you when I do a live stream or whatever. Because I wouldn't mind doing some of the cross stitch and embroidery because it's not like, because I have those tutorials anyways, but it's more like, a, hey, let's just sit down and chat. So now I have this funky pumpkin. So I was thinking if you had a tennis ball or a softball or anything that you could put in there that's kind of roundish, maybe one of those little glass candle votive inserts there. And then you just sit here and play with this a little bit until it gets kind of round. And for me, I was taking it and just kind of pressing down on the center of those beads you know, spring it around a little bit because the whole point of the pipe cleaners is you can shape them. So this one looks like it's gonna be a little bit of a taller pumpkin and they don't stand up very well. A balloon, yes. I never think of a balloon because of my latex allergy. We will have no balloons. If we ever get together in person, no balloons because you'll see my lips swell up immediately. I've gone into grocery stores that give free balloons to kids. And if there's too many kids in the grocery store, like four, my lips swell up. It's crazy. That's why I carry Benadryl in my wallet. So yeah, now they're not pretty, but I think it's kind of a fun decoration. So you can almost, you know, if you had some Oh, uh, one of the styrofoam balls and you wrap it with orange fabric or something, you can tuck that in there or something. If you have more patience than me and you play with it, then, you know, you can just have a lot of fun with them. All right, it's 20 minutes to four. We must have a drink because I'm feeling it. People would just want to see and hear you. Jody's right. We could watch you doze off. Remember, Carlos was in the hospital with COVID and Arnie just sat and knitted with no talking. Yes, I do remember that. I haven't watched Arnie and Carlos in a while. They were doing something and I it was some series and stuff and I just kind of wasn't interested at the moment and I stopped watching and then I just, I forget to go back, you know, sometimes. I usually don't unsubscribe, but if you stop watching things for a while, YouTube will stop putting it up there. Uh, yes. And that's another thing I want to make. I want to make banners. I have... Um, Christmas pillows I want to make. I still haven't even done my advent card, my advent cards. Nope. Hold on on that. I haven't done my Christmas postcards for my patrons yet. I did do my advent for my friend that we do our advent every year. I already wrapped everything. I forgot to tell you guys two Whip It Wednesdays ago. It should actually be at her house yesterday at the post office. So, um, my advent's done ahead of time. I've got hers all done. I did all the videos of me wrapping it and showing you what I got. So now I just wait until hers. I told her, you know, as long as it's here two days before December 1st, I'm happy. I just don't have room here to store everything. I needed it packaged up and out so it's out of my hands and I don't have to worry about losing anything or anything like that because it's crazy here. Oh, they kept changing their schedule. To be honest with you, I watch people like, I watch Frugal Fit Mom. 
been watching her for years. I was watching her when she still had braces on before she had her kitchen remodel, the whole bit when her boys were really, really young and her daughter too, of course. And I, I watched her back then and I couldn't even tell you now what day of the week she posts on because I don't really pay attention. Yeah, I want to get back. To, I loved making the bunting and I made Valentine's, Christmas, and something else, I think. And that was it. Maybe a couple different Christmas. I did the ho, ho, ho and stuff like that. And I had so many, I have a notebook with them all written down in it. And I'm like, ah, oh, where's the time? And that uses up scraps. So I think we could do that. If you guys don't mind doing things on the live stream without like directions or something but if it's something like really good like if we're gonna I'm gonna teach you how to make a fabric pumpkin by the way I have a video somewhere for how to make fabric pumpkins but it might just be for my patrons or it might be here I don't remember I can't keep it straight where I do things half the time Cindy Marino if you're still watching and still part of the channel this is your bag from the salvages thank you so much I'm pretty sure salvages were in here I write everyone's name on it but then I ended up dumping them all they made leaves on twine that's really cool so I'm using it for my beads because I, I reuse my Ziploc baggies and this fits everything in here nicely so if I want to make some more later now, and these are going to be great too, because if they get squished in the move, it won't matter. They can come back out and everything will be fine. All right, watch the microphone. Squish, squish, squish. I haven't sat down at the end of this table in forever. I mean, my sewing machine is usually here, but I haven't sat. Like I put my, my Juki is, that's the, you can see the cover over there. And then my my brother's sewing machine's on the floor right now. It's got a cover on it, so it's fine. But yeah, so these, I mean, they just all squished together. They'll be good. All right, don't look as scary. I move all the pumpkins over there. Here we go. All right, deep breath. So that wasn't too scary, right, about the big changes? Because they're not really all that big of a change for YouTube and stuff like that this year and next year. I think it'll be fine. Oh yeah, the glow in the dark beads and stuff like that. That would be great. That would be fun. Oh, there's my face. Sometimes when I'm doing my videos, I lean down in front of the camera and you can like see through my glasses and like you can see all my gray hairs and stuff. And I'm like, oh, good thing we're editing that out. You can even, the, um, the chenille stems come in all kinds of fancy colors and glitters and all that fun. Maybe you could put a base at the bottom. I don't know. There, there's, I'm sure everyone's so creative. I used to give you guys here. This is what I came up in 30 seconds. Let me show it to you. And then you guys run with it and come up with all the fun creative stuff. Excuse my yawns. Oh. I have... I get so many migraines and stuff. You guys know, I'm always talking about how I'm always, I almost had a migraine today, but I took some um, generic. Amazon has the Excedrin migraine in their generic ones. Really cute. Uh, really cute. Really inexpensive. So I bought a big bottle of that. And it's, for me, it's not like drink caffeine, you get a migraine. Drink caffeine, you're going to get acid reflux. But when I work too much, the muscles with the nerve issues and the disc issues in my neck, the muscles tighten up to protect it and with all the shoulder surgeries. So it gets really mad and that tightness in those muscles just goes right up into my head and gives me a crazy migraine. So I'm just trying to, you know, like I said, just to take care of myself to make sure that the body's going to work for next week. Otherwise, I, I'd rather cut back a little now than to say oh that's it guys i can't do anything anymore oh that bookcase is crooked i can't do anything anymore and that bookcase really looks like it's gonna fall over now i'm wearing gray gray hair gray shirt i pick out my shirt and my clothes and i'm like what kind of day am i having today do i want my shorts to allow me to sit down and slouch and be comfortable around the waist 
or do I want them to, you know, hold all my fat in today? Do I need a thick t-shirt or a thin t-shirt? Do I want to be like a bum? What I want to do? All right, so I can't cut sitting in a chair, so there's the chair. See, that's what it is. Like, I sat down now, and I'm like, I don't really want to work anymore. Oh, cut with a stripology jeweler? Nah, we're good. Do we have to stand up for that? I don't have the motivation. It's also getting... Right, Peggy? It's really not as good as we say. Excuse me once again while I lean forward. I keep the stripology ruler. I have a screw in the wall, and then I take duct tape, and I wrap the duct tape around the screw so that I can put this and hang it on the wall. The screw won't constantly be scratching at that hole and chipping it away. And I feel like the duct tape cushions it a little bit. And you definitely can't hold up these rulers with a thumbtack because, I mean, there, there's heft to these. There's heft to them. Intolerant to histamine. Oh, no. I hope I don't have that problem because I take that every day for this. The allergies in this house are like crazy. The, 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 I thought my house was dusty. This, the AC vents must really need to be cleaned in this house because it's very dusty. And it's like a, a dirty dust. It's not like a light floating around dust. It's like a dirty dust. All right, so here's the stripology ruler. As I mentioned, there is the link down below for the video from the designer. I would highly recommend watching that if you're going to get one or if you're curious. I've used this just to quickly cut up the scraps for the Halloween and the Christmas. Now I'm going to cut novelty scraps. I'm going to try to follow the rules and make sure because all of mine weren't perfectly even with the scraps. Some of them have that little bend elbow in the middle of them. But I thought since they were just random sizes and scraps and length and stuff like that, that that didn't really matter as much. But today, as I'm cutting two and a half inch strips, I want to get them as true to two and a half inches and good as I can. I just lost inches in my waist, so my pants are falling down, but my shirt still look like I'm a potato. Oh. She gave you the side eye, huh? Oh, the antihistamine is that? Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm taking an antihistamine. Exactly. Okay, so the, what did I do? I made, I took one of my extra, what have I got? An Ulfa rotary cutter. I wrote stripology on the back and I put a new uh, 45 millimeter blade in here so that this blade is only for in here. So I'll know when I've cut a lot of fabric, I'll need a new blade. Cause I need to change my other one cause it's starting to make the shaggy edges and stuff like that for overall, it's no big deal. This stripology ruler has the, the scratchy cloudiness underneath, like, like on a bathroom window and stuff. So this one, look, the mat moves before the ruler moves. You can use a 60 inch, a 60 millimeter blade or a 45 on this. I have the 45. I do have a few 60s, but I don't actually have a 60 cutter. I use, someone sent me their 60 old ones and a couple new ones to use for my, my, my purple flower thread cutter. Cause that's what size it takes. I'm, I'm fine with this. If you use the 45, she says you can cut four layers. If you use the 60, you can cut six layers. My shoulder won't allow me to cut six layers. I'm better just a little bit of pressure on four, and then I can cut, you know, 10 yards. Or if I do six, then I have to put a lot of pressure on to get through all those layers. I might only be able to cut two or three yards, and it causes a lot of pain. My shoulder is already a little tender, so I know I can't cut for hours and hours today. I'm just going to cut with you guys for a bit, and then I'll be done, and it'll be fine. If it bothers me, I'll ice it. Yeah, Jody, I can't go through more. That's just, it's not going to work for me. What I have noticed is I love the fact that it has the stars for the one and a half inch cuts so you never have to think. And it has the squares down here for the two and a half inch cuts. Let me see if I can show you guys. I'm sure you've seen videos and pictures, but let's just take a look. See how every two and a half inches it has a square and every one and a half it has the stars. And here's the zero, and this is where we're going to line things up and stuff. 
They've got the 45 degrees and all that, and I haven't played with it. I did buy the 20 and a half inch ruler, so I used that to square up my blocks. Plus I have a 12 and a half inch ruler that this is 12 and a half inches for squaring up. I don't need that, so I don't use it. This is not a tutorial. This is just me cutting fabric with you guys. So take everything you see with a grain of salt. Have you ever tried the ergonomical handles? I've seen them. I don't know. I haven't tried them. I don't, yeah, no, I haven't tried them at all. But it's, um, there's days when I'm having a bad shoulder day that if I take a butter knife and go to cut through toast or a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, it's painful. Uh, there's times when I can't cut like a turkey sandwich in half with just white bread that I have to bring my other hand over to cut. So I don't think an ergonomical rotary cutter is going to do very much for days like that. So I just have to be careful. It's much better now than it was because I've been dealing with this since 2008. So I had three surgeries on the right shoulder and one on the left. So I produce bone spurs very, very well. Right, aren't these crazy? These are computers. Some of them are smiling. Some of them are like licking their lips or look a little like they got a virus or something like that. I think that's what this, vi this fabric is called. Timeless Treasures, Silly Tech. So what you have to do is anytime you're cutting your fabric, you're supposed to line up your two salvages together. And she shows you this in the video and I've seen other videos on how to do it. You lift it up and you hold your fabric up. You're not going to be able to see it. So I'm just going to hold it up a little bit like this and you let your fabric hang down and you don't line it up with the salvages. You, you want to make sure that it's going to be lined up here. You just kind of give it this wiggle shake and then you lay it down. And that's where, cause I have this little pizza slice here that is not, this is the back of the fabric that's showing up. So you want your salvages to about be lined up. Salvages are never cut true or anything like that. So they could be a little wonky. So I pressed all of mine. I have a little light crease here from pressing it. And you bring this one up. Now in her video, she tells you to bring it all the way up. So it's above the salvages and stuff. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the salvages off and save those. So I'm going to leave myself a little space. And with all the slices in the ruler, you have to hold two hands and be really careful. Sometimes I hold it with a hand underneath it to support it because it's quite, it can be quite a little bit wobbly and you don't want to damage your ruler at all. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to line it up like on the black line down here. But I usually go up just a little bit and I pick up, there's a half inch, there's a white line that goes straight down there. I usually line that up down there. And to avoid that crooked elbow piece in your, like your jelly roll strip, you want to have it lined up up here. So there's a black line up there that it's lined up on. But what I need to do first is I'm going to slide it down and I'm going to cut those selvages off. And I'm just going to use the top of my ruler and just run it on down. So now the salvages, she doesn't save her salvages. She just leaves them attached to the jelly roll strip, but that makes me feel guilty. Like I should save it. So I save the salvages and then I can line this up and you can choose any line on it. As long as you're in between this black line here, and then there's a 13 mark up here for 13 inches because you have to put your rotary cutter blade in these little teardrops down there. So you can't have them in that area. Now the zero line is going to be your first cut and that's where you're going to cut off all of the funky ends there. So sometimes I'll leave it a little bit wide so that I now have this piece of scrap that I could play with it if I wanted to, but I'm just going to move it down. See where the pieces are there. Line it up again at the bottom. Make sure it's lined up along that top fold because I know that fold is nice and even with everybody. You go up a little here because we're going to put our, our rotary cutter in that teardrop. So if you line it up way down here, 
you're running it through the ruler for absolutely nothing until you get to the fabric. So you want to have your fabric either at that zero line or close to it. And if you're just cutting for scraps, I probably should have something underneath here to stop it from moving, but we'll just be fine. If you're just cutting it up for scraps and you get that wonky weird elbow part, just cut it off right there and you'll have two strips instead of one long strip. And it depends if you're cutting it off the bolt or yardage, then the video off the bolt or scraps, she says to take it directly off the bolt. Some of these are folded right off the bolt and some of my fabrics aren't. So I just chose the ones that were folded right off the bolt so I can do it. Now you can be left-handed or right-handed so you can cut like this or you can cut like this because we're not going to move the ruler. We're going to go into the zero. Now, if you take your rotary cutter and you go in it straight up and down, you're going to have a hard time. So if you just angle that rotary cutter and put the blade in at a little bit of an angle, a little bit to the side like that, and you bring it up, it's going to put you right in that slot. And you really don't have to put too much pressure, but you want to kind of hold on to it a little bit. And you want to cut off that scrap. Now, I just leave it there. Now I'm going to cut two and a half inch wide strips. So without even having to think, I can go right to my square. I have it a little bit of an angle, slide it in. And as I get going down, I'll put my hand there, but it's staying really well. So I have no math involved. Just go right to the squares and just cut it. See, I don't have to move my ruler. I don't have to readjust it. My hand is shaky today. So once I get it in the slot, it stays in there. In the video, she mentions being careful that your hand doesn't drop down or anything. You want to make sure that your rotary cutter is making contact. I already did that one. That was my next thing. You can't see where your last cut was, so sometimes I just cut nothing. And then you can just keep going. And here is the 20. And now that leaves me this bit of scrap left over. And then I have this piece right there and what I've noticed is you can't really just lift this up what I do is I slide it a little it breaks the static I have a place when I have my stuff normally set up where I can set the ruler so it just sits there but for now I will just put it right here and then you have all of your two and a half inch pieces right there and look, if we weren't talking, think about how fast that would have been to go ahead and do that. So now I have my plastic bin that I showed you guys. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I can make eight bundles, even though I don't know, I think maybe six fit in here. We'll see. And I just lay them down flat in my plastic bin here. And each time I cut another piece of fabric, I'll lay it on top. And that way I will have the scrap bundles, two, three, four, five, seven, I fit in there. And then number eight will just go right there for now. And then I just set this on my bed behind me and I, I cut them and then I grab like four and four and then I move them over and stack them nice and neatly here. I got a light behind me. And then this one, you know, keep or toss. I sometimes if I like the fabric and it makes me happy, I will save this and I will use it for that scrap that I do when I'm sewing and I let it run through first. But this one, I, I have this thing. I like to use like semi-solid scraps to go through because I like to see the different colors of thread build up. This one's too crazy. But if I wanted to, I could like save this and say, okay, that looks pretty good there. Maybe I'll start a crumb pile for someone, you know. Maybe someone wants to purchase some crumbs or whatever. But I'm just going to toss those, and I'm going to be okay with tossing them, even though they landed on the floor. And then this one wasn't measured right because it had the odd bits or whatnot. But I can set this aside and say, okay, this one is going to be for random scrappy things. How much did the ruler cost? I want to say the ruler was around the 70 something dollar mark, the $80 mark. You'd have to check Amazon and the other sites like quilt, uh, quilt sites and stuff like that. But this is not inexpensive. This is definitely, yeah, if I want to cut these squares, then I'm supposed to line these up 
you can line them right up on your mat and you can line up a whole bunch of them like this and make sure they're lined up on a line and then you bring your ruler up and you line it up with your ruler and now you can just whip through and cut two and a half inch squares quick and quick and quick they say so easy and you can cut your rectangles and stuff like that and then there's the diamonds and all of that stuff so it's really quick it's really fun actually this is some of the things that I do until nine o'clock otherwise it's computer stuff and she recommends oh I can press that one very well that'll be on the edge anyways she recommends having the salvages at the top but I mean what if you want it to go this way I mean it's, it's your fabric you can have it go this way if you want but I think this would be fun so I have this salvage doesn't have anything written on it and there's nothing exciting there so I'll probably just leave the salvages on bring my ruler line it up at the bottom make sure it's lined up at the top and everything looks good if you let it go past the last black line the 13 inch here you can't you you have to take your rotary cutter all the way from teardrop to teardrop sometimes it doesn't cut all the way through if you let your fabric get close too close to the end and you don't have to line it up at the zero if you don't want to you can line it up wherever if you're just cutting random strips and stuff like that but if you're specifically cutting a bunch of jelly roll strips then you know you kind of have to pay attention so let's see if we can do this left-handed on the first one I did it, but that sure takes thought. All right, I'm not gonna talk. I'm just gonna cut through and we'll see how quick it is. Oh, I can't get it in the slot. So if it's pretty quick, especially if your hands aren't shaking and you can actually get it in there. So this one is garbage. This one I'll put up here. And then I have these. Now since I only have six of these, I will go ahead and I will start in number one and lay them down. So the next time I'll put the extra ones and I'll start at the end. But eventually I'm gonna to get to the point where I'm just cutting, you know, like the width of the ruler and stuff so there won't be extras. But by doing this, instead of just throwing it in the tub, like I did the first time, everything is all neat and ready to go. So when you guys order it, it only takes me a couple minutes to get it in the package instead of taking a long time. Boy, this mat really slides a lot. I think if I were doing this a lot I would want to have a mat and a table set up just for this so that it's always ready to go and you're always because you're going to be cutting if you don't move in different places on your mat you're going to be cutting it in the same grooves all the time so you're going to end up with grooves in your um, cutting mat that won't have time to heal or anything like that so you just kind of have to move around a little bit I've tried putting them in different pillows and stuff like that. I really don't care for it. And the uh, animal shelters here won't take the pet beds with the fabric and the pillow. So these are the actual bundles that are going to be going into the shop once I get enough. Yeah, something like that. I just, normally the sewing machine's sitting on it and it holds it down so it's not a problem. Flower Fairies by Rose and Hubble, The Estate of Cicely Mary Barker, books published by Frederick Warren and Company, licensed by copyrights not used for commercial manufacturer. Hmm. It's a very thin salvage, so I'm not even going to worry about it. 
I already double checked when I was pulling fabrics out to make sure that they were about the right width because if you are cutting just a yard or something you're not bad but if otherwise you have like a whole bunch of yardage just coming off to the side so I would slide my ruler down that way and let my yardage just sit there all ready to go and stuff just a little bit off the edge so you see as I was going down I didn't have to stop I didn't have to flip it I didn't have to move the ruler wet paper towels yeah I didn't have to move the ruler. I didn't have to reline everything up because, you know, as you're going, sometimes the rulers get going a little sideways and you have to re-straighten your fabric and stuff. And I like this ruler because the June Taylor one, I believe, came might have come out first. I don't, I'm not really 100% sure, but hers is very thin. This is a really good ruler width. It's, it's a nice, let me see. Yep, it's the same width as my OmniGrid ruler, and it's of that same plasticky thickness feeling, so it feels very sturdy, except it has that. So that's why it's good for the rotary cutters and everything like that. And the June Taylor one, I've heard some people say they accidentally cut into their groove and stuff, so I was really worried about that. Now, the first few times I used this, I could hear the plastic getting kind of cut a little bit, but I think that's just whatever was in there. Like if it wasn't fully disconnected and cut all the way through or something, it was taking some rough edges off. But after I cut a few different stripes and used all the slots and stuff, that sound and that feel just went away and it was fine. Just a little warning. So because my fabric doesn't go all the way, of course I can lift it out at anywhere. It just kind of gets stuck a little bit, but it works. Again, I have this extra piece. I can just, if I'm gonna cut a bunch of scraps and stuff, I may as well make a collection of a, a crumb package. So for someone who wants just random, cause there's people who use scraps like I do and then people who use crumbs, you know, and they like to have the smaller pieces. So I might even just do, you never know, I might put it in the shop, I might do a giveaway, I might message someone who buys the scrap package and said, hey, I have these, or I might just put them in extra for somebody. I'm having the duck around a lamp. And the studio light is right here behind me. I'm laughing at myself because I have to duck around it. So I, I am very, very happy to have this ruler. I'm very grateful to those of you that sent a little financial support. And for those of you that purchased from my Etsy shop so that I could purchase this ruler and the 20 and a half, I used the 21, the 20 and a half more than I thought I would. So I have my salvage and I'll just decide to take that much. I like at least a half an inch off the salvages. And if I get enough, because right now I have enough salvages for myself, I'm just looking for the ones that have, oops, sorry, I kicked you. I'm just looking for the ones that have fun things down here. Like if those were little pig faces or little circles of pizza or the little Christmas trees, I've seen flamingo ones and stuff. Those I want to save. Okay, so this needs to be folded up a little bit. I don't even have to fold it all the way up, I don't think, as long as this fold is nice. And I go like this. And I make sure if I just shake it down, make sure everybody's even and I'm not lining it up and making it be even. I'm just letting it do its thing. That was a game changer for me because that's part of the thing that's going to stop you from getting those weird bends and elbows in the middle of your jelly roll strips. It is very addictive. I think I could even watch someone sit here and do this. Okay, so let me get back down to zero because it's hard to use the two and a half inch with squares if you're not at zero. I just really love, creative grid rulers are quite expensive in general. They do cost more, but I feel like the quality's there. Even when I do things to make my other ones slip, non-slip, slip less, it can't compare to the creative grids. I think these, right now, it's my ruler of choice. 
I'm not buying a bunch. I'm not changing out my other ones. But anytime I want to or need to get a new ruler, I'm going for the creative grids. There's my junk. Oh, that's right. It goes in the trash can. There's my extra bit. So I have seven. So I know last time I stopped at six. So I put an extra there. Because it's not like... It's by pound, you know, I'm selling it by weight, not by who got the most strips, but I just like to spread it out a little bit so, you know, everyone gets a little bit of something. So, it's like, you know, I got two packages and one of them had 10 strips and one of them had nine or something, and it's really, it's it's about the weight, so. You have the June, June Taylor one, Frida. Do you like it? Is it as bad as people say that it's really thin and hard to cut? I think if you have something and you use it, you just get used to any quirks that there might be. So it's like maybe you don't really kind of like notice things and stuff like that. At least that's how I'm, I mean, I don't know it. Like I was working with a, one of the old singers that you can get for like a hundred bucks. I had it for years and stuff. And I thought it was the greatest sewing machine. Then I got my little brother Disney sewing machine. And I'm like, wow. This is fancy. Then I got the Juki and I was like, wow, this is even fancier. Because you don't know what you don't have until, you know, you get something a little better. Now, you're supposed to put your hand here and hold this down and stuff when you cut the zero. But I just find right now, maybe this might slip later in time or something. But if I just hold it and keep my fingers away so I don't cut myself... And I can just follow it up a little bit. It just comes along that zero, no problem. So after we do this, we're going to open it up and see if we have any elbows. Because I could be talking all day and saying how great it is. You know, you're quilting a quilt, free motion, and then you turn it over and you're like, oh no. I have to take all that quilting out. So maybe all this talking and I could have made a total mess of everything. Hi, Jackie. Oh, does that mean Mama was late or was she on time? I'm glad you could join us. We're just sitting here cutting up our strips. If you want, you can go back and watch the beginning on the replay later on. We talked about changes that are going to happen here or could happen here on the YouTube channel. And then talked a little bit about the schedule for Arizona and stuff. But I'm glad you could make it before we were done. Oh, Daddy picked her up. Oh, nice. That's nice for, let me double check, Tori. Oh, look. That looks good. I mean, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, no, it looks good. Everything is going right along the line there. I just say, if you're buying my scrap bundles, they are for scraps. Sometimes you might have a little issue. Sometimes the fabric was a little shorter and you might have a kink. If you're prepared for it and it happens, it won't be too bad. If I don't tell you about it and you see it and you expected perfect jelly roll strips, and then, you know, you might get a little upset. So these are just scrap strips. I'm doing my best, and, you know, as I start out and do things, it might not be perfect, but the more I do it, the better I get. What size is your ruler? This is the Stripology Extra Large Ruler. There's a smaller one, I believe. I want to say it's like 12 and a half inches, or it might only be 8 or 10 inches. But I was thinking that in the future I'd get the smaller one also. It's, I think it's a little smaller in both directions. Because this one's great when you're cutting yardage, but sometimes you might just have a little leftover of a fat quarter you want to cut up. And putting it on here, it's, sometimes it's overkill. But if I were only to buy one, I would buy the larger one because that gives me more cuts. But if you can only afford one, then the smaller one, of course, is less expensive. Hi, Whiskers. Whiskers, I have my fabric. I gave it a nice good press. And it's been sitting on top of a box on my bed. And Whiskers is protecting it. She's my big girl. She, she pretends like she's mean and evil. 
She's one of the reasons you see scratches on my arms when I make videos, but you know, that's the whole point of having cats. You know, they, they, they can be evil. So again, I'm going, I find it easier definitely with two hands to pick it up and slide it out. It's easier to slide it out than to try to pick it up this way. So I'm just going to cut that chunk off. They said I'm good on the salvages, but maybe if I get enough, I'll make a salvage bundle to go into the shop or a lot of people just add them instead of having like an entire salvage quilt, they just add them in, add them into random places and stuff. This is a really fun fabric. It's got this fun cow. I don't know if you can see it. It's got all these little, there's that cow. So it has all of these little boxes and stuff. I always look at things like this and, and my, 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 uh, I don't know, that part inside me says, no, no, don't get rid of it. Keep it. Don't cut that. Don't give that to those people. What are they going to do with it? You want it, but what am I going to make with it? I'm not going to make anything with it, internal Robin. So be quiet. We're cutting it up for our friends. Let them have fun with it. It's very colorful. It'll add some fun to a string quilt. Because with string quilts, it's not as necessary to have perfect widths of fabric for a scrappy string quilt because you're going to cut it down for your block anyway. So this ruler, anyways, it's um, 0 to 20 and 0 to 13, but it has a little bit on the edge that you can cut it there. And so I'd say it's 21 inches that way if you want. Just to make sure I gave you all the information. Two and a half inch strips. Yes, that's what I'm cutting today. When I was cutting scraps before, I was just, I'm like, oh. Let me cut two inch strips this time. Let me cut an inch and a half. For the inch and a half, there's stars that are down here. And for the two and a half, there's a square. So you don't even have to count. You just go, okay, I'm going to cut at every time there's a square. Because sometimes, you know, like, okay, five and two and a half is seven and a half. Seven and a half and two and a half is, okay, that's ten. So let me go here. When you can just go, la, da, 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 da. I don't have to do math and that makes my day happy because while math is not necessarily hard I don't know if I cut that all the way yep I did it sometimes you just don't want to think you just want to cut it and be done with you're already thinking I need oh yeah I need 45 half square triangles I need 72 two and a half inch squares and all of that just gets going hello crafty crafty author Anissa. I don't think I paid attention to know that was your name. My apologies. Welcome, welcome. We're glad you can hang out with us. You missed our fun funky pumpkins. We made beaded pumpkins from a kit that, I don't know. Have you made those pumpkins or seen them where you take the the plastic tubing from the back of your dryer for the dryer lint to go out and you can put it around in a circle and close it up somehow and then spray paint them orange. Those are really cool. I always wanted to make one of those because those stay like perfect. From what I've been told by people who have bought both of them, they said that the stripology is better. They prefer it. You can definitely tell when your rotary cutter, it, just like when you're cutting regular fabric, when you go to separate it and there's a piece connecting it still, then you know your rotary cutter is getting a little dull. And mine better not dull because it's a titanium one and I just put it in before I started the video. It's funny, I know I cut every two and a half inches, but some of these just looked wider than others and I had to check. Then once my bin is full, I'll get these listed in the shop too. But I'm, I'm going to say, you know, unless you, you know, message me either an email or Etsy and say, Robin, I really need scraps now. 
it, it's probably going to take me a couple weeks to get enough bundles. Because I feel bad if I only put up so many bundles and people enjoy them and then purchase them. Because I put up the six half pound um, Halloween ones and they went pretty quick. So I felt bad that if anyone else wanted one, they weren't able to get one. But I mean, if, if you want them, you grab them when you see them because you know they go quick. So as we get going, I will try to keep them in the shop. I want to, I'm ordering my new planner for 2024. I've been practicing with a planner this year. So I'm, I'm finding my groove and figuring out what I need to do and what works for me. So I want to set myself up a daily schedule. I've said this before, like when you go to school and you have like block scheduling and stuff so that I can incorporate, like I know every Friday for two hours, I need to cut strips or something like that. So if the fabric is prepared, I can just lay it down like this and cut a bunch and I bet you I can get a lot done in a two hour time. Or maybe my shoulder doesn't like two hours and I can only do an hour. So I wait because I spend a lot of time going, oh, what should I do? I have so much to do that I don't know what to do. I was reading somewhere or on a video or something like that where it's not that we're lazy. We just have decision paralysis. We have so much to do. We just can't decide what to do first and what to prioritize. So if I give myself, uh-oh, see, I didn't cut all the way through on those. If I give myself a schedule, maybe I'll get things done. So when you're chatting with people, you don't always pay attention and have things lined up in the right spot. So you have the ends to do. Don't overdo it. Yeah, I have to, I have to be careful. When I used my strip ruler, I did have some that came out not as wide as I needed, just a smidge, but enough to make a difference. Yeah, it can make a difference. When I was, even not that long ago, just cutting with the ruler and cutting strips and stuff, it's like you can get off just a little bit if your ruler slips or if you didn't have the fabric lined up just right. And it, it will make a difference. If you're sewing scraps and just having fun and making string quilts and log cabins that are wonky and stuff, it's not a big deal. But if you're cutting strips to then cut into squares or to use in a quilt, they need to be, you know, perfect. They need to, they need to. But I think I'm going to stop here today because my shoulder and my elbow are twinging. So I'm going to listen to myself and say, that's it. But I will show you the rest of the fabrics that I have prepared just for fun. So you can see some of what's going to be in the scrap bundles. So this is put on your dancing shoes, stepping out with my gal. Oh, there's more. And then I have, because when you're cut, cutting strips, a lot of time when you're doing scraps, it's more about the color. So there's a lot of browns in here. Yes, there's cats and stuff, but as you're putting it together, you're not going to see as much. You're going to see mostly the creams and the browns and stuff like that. And then I love this fence fabric with a girl and it looks like, I want to say dogs. It could be cats where they're putting on hats and holding teddy bears. And then the, the neon cows jumped over the moon. So those are going to get cut up and put into the bundles. I'll keep collecting my scraps. So again, we're going to just kind of wing it with the YouTube thing. If you don't see me, don't be nervous that something happened. Or you might just, again, get a video of me sewing with uh, music. And I'll make sure it's not a long video. No one wants to watch me sewing forever. It's going to be more like something similar to the shorts, but possibly a little longer. Because I can never get my shorts to be short enough. And not the ones I'm wearing, but the ones on the video. And then I'll put a link down below in the first comment like I do now. So you can go check out an older video and, you know, if you want to watch something, you can. And if not, you know, that's fine. I just appreciate it when you watch it all the way through. Whip It Wednesdays will definitely still be here at 9 a.m. on Wednesdays. We are going to go live. Our next live will be in, let's see, where's 
November 3rd, because that's the first Friday, so the 3rd and the 17th. That keeps us plenty of time away from Thanksgiving. I told you guys, once we hit this month, once we get past September, time is going to fly. October is halfway through, and we're already talking about Thanksgiving next month, and then Christmas, and we're in the new year. So that's why I wanted to move to Arizona in September or October, because now at this point, everything's just going to go super fast, and who knows what's going to happen. Maybe we will move around Christmas time. That might be a nice present. No, not too short, but yeah, it's an hour and a half. I was planning on stopping after an hour, so an hour and a half, that's pretty good. We didn't like create anything, but you know what? I really don't feel bad about it. I don't have that guilty twinge because we played with the pumpkin beads and we learned about the stripology ruler. So I think if it's something that you can fit into your budget or you can save up for or get some gift cards for Christmas, you know, it's something with that time of the year coming up to ask for. I think it's a really great gift. And I think anyone, this is one of those things like the go cutter. I have a go cutter and I have a bunch of dies, but I don't bring it out because you have to do it a certain way and you have to be specific and you get this and that and you have to crank it through or use the electric and deal with it a lot. And for what I do, the cutting machines don't make sense. This makes sense because I do a lot of strips and stuff like that. Yeah, I cut a lot of strips. So this, if you cut a lot of strips, I think this is really good. Oh, happy birthday to your daughter. She's not that far after yours. That's really fun. So I think I think it's a great I think it's a great ruler. It just it does hurt to purchase because it's a little expensive. If you don't think you'll be able to ever afford this and the June Taylor, I haven't checked prices. If the June Taylor is in your budget and you want to try it, I say, you know, do what you think is right, but see some of the comments on Amazon, watch some of the videos, see if it's going to work for you because the June Taylor one is thinner it kind of reminds me i haven't had one in person so i don't know but by looking at people holding them and stuff it reminds me of like x-ray film yeah i got a lot of strips cut i really did in that short amount of time so we cut a bunch we cut one two three four five six seven different fabrics these tubs are great for holding them, so I will have seven bundles. I'm going to try to get these up to a pound, but that is a lot more fabric than you realize because a pound of fabric is 3.3 yards normally. Phoenix temps are still over 100. Yeah, I was wondering about that, Jackie. Jackie, I don't know if you're watching and you're caught up with us. If you're talking about Phoenix temps, you might be back at the beginning or you might be watching live. I'm not sure. No, you're watching live because you heard me talk about who picked up your granddaughter. We are good. See, I can answer my own questions. Ow, that shoulder is a twinge. Ooh, did you hear that? <laughs> That's better when things crack. I actually, on my right shoulder, they actually cut off, like, uh, on the, um, they did a lot of cleanup of bone spurs, and then I had to go back, and my third surgery, they actually shaved off the end of... I don't know, my shoulder, whatever. Yeah, Giovanna, I agree. I would save a bit longer and get this one because you might get disappointed if you spend, uh, let's just, let's make up numbers, okay? Let's say June Taylor costs $50 and you get it and you're like, oh no, it's, it's not, it slides around. It's not that thick. I really would have preferred to have gotten the stripology. So you spent $50 on June Taylor. Now you got to spend 70 or 80 on the stripology. If you just waited and saved another 20 or $30 and waited a little bit, you could get this because let's face it. Most people probably already have, um, six by 24 inch ruler. Let me lean across to you again. I have two because I saved up so I can get a new creative grids one. And I had this one, I have a Fiskars that I have had for almost since the beginning of my, my sewing, let's say, you know, like 2010 or so, but I needed a new one cause come on, let's focus. All of this is all worn off down there and it's all chipped and everything like that. And these rulers slide like crazy. So I was constantly, because I don't have the strength to hold it, 
even with putting a weight on it and stuff, it would still slide on me. So I'd end up wasting fabric and creating more scraps because I couldn't get it to line up. When I can put this one on, and you hear my fingers possibly squeaking and pushing on it, and it's really hard to move. So I don't have to put a lot of pressure. I can just put my hand here and hold it gently and run through with the rotary cutter, even going through a quilt when I'm trimming up a quilt. So this one works a whole lot better. I like, I like the creative grids. If I'd have known back in the day, I don't know, I, prob I got some really good deals on, what are these? I got really good deals on the, who's this? Oh, I don't know what Optima is, so there's that ruler. And then OmniGrids. I got a really good deal because I got packages of the OmniGrids. And it was at the time where you could still use coupons at Michael's and Joann's. So I got the package of the 2.5, 4.5, 6.5, 9.5, It was like $55 or something. And I used a 50% off coupon. So I got a really good deal. Hi, Evan. I'm really sorry we're getting ready to um, shut down here once I stop rambling. Use a coupon, check out for Black Friday sales. If you have Amazon, whether you have Prime or not, if you create a wish list, you can share that with your families. Like I have a wish list down below in the description box that I share with you guys. But if you put this on a wish list, Amazon will tell you, hey Robin, did you know your ruler is $3 cheaper than it was when you put it on the wish list? Hey Robin, did you know, you know, we have this is on sale this week or it's gonna be on sale for Black Friday. Amazon's always telling me, but I kind of use Amazon a lot. I can get a lot of my over-the-counter medications that are the same quality, I get the generic, but I can get a year's worth versus like two months worth so yeah I do I buy a lot of just random stuff I do check I do do searches I say the top vitamin D's you know which is the best vitamin D to get which company I check all the reviews I make sure there's a certain number of reviews but I got 360 vitamin D 50 MCGs 2000 IUs or whatever my doctor did some blood work so I needed to take vitamin D because I don't go outside and I don't have a lot of calcium and stuff like that or whatever vitamin D is in so I had to take one of these tiny ones a day but I got one bottle versus just a couple of months and it lasts me the whole year basically 360 days so I use Amazon a lot so they're always telling me hey Robin there's a deal this is we got this going on and that going on so but if you put it in your cart and click save later they will tell you hey you know this is on sale or another seller has it on sale so you could put this in a wish list or in a save later card or something and wait for it to come up on sale for because um, Amazon has Amazon Prime Day and then they have Black Fridays, and then they have, oh wait, it's October, let's just have a sale day because we don't wanna wait for Black Friday. This is just crazy. So you can get it a little bit cheaper, but you know, save up your gift cards. You can put more than one gift card in, get it at a quilt shop or something, watch for when they're having sales. Maybe you have a quilty friend that has something that they don't use, and then you know you can go ahead and use it. But I'm going to let you guys go because I'm getting hot without the ceiling fan on. You remember, I'm in a room with no windows or nothing. Oh, poor Robin. She's, she's in a closet. Oh, oh, poor Robin. Yeah, I know, right? Just sometimes it feels good to just wallow in self-pity. You do it for set a timer. I'm going to wallow in self-pity today for one and a half minutes. And then I'm going to kick myself in the butt and go and accomplish stuff. Hey. I'm over here whispering like the microphone's not on my shirt still. I can't get used to it. There's no cats crying. Did you guys notice we don't have any cats today? I have whiskers who just went from under my bed to on top of my bed because she got hot probably. My other calico mocha's wandering around, but my daughter's cats aren't screaming and crying. I wonder if it's because I didn't shut my bedroom door this time for the live stream. Do you remember the thing you talked about near the beginning that was on your wish list? Words just come out of my mouth. Did I have something on my wish list that I talked about? All right, somebody help Tracy out. Remind me, what did I say was on my wish list? 
I had these on my wish list. I know I said I have a wish list with a few things on it. I don't know if I mentioned anything in particular. I'm sorry. Yeah, Creative Grids are the... I have to say right now, I haven't tried all the rulers, but of the ones I've tried, I love them. Oh, thank you, Costanza. I appreciate you coming and hanging out with me and listening to my rambles. I'm sorry, Tracy. I can't think of what I talked about in my wish list, but there's a lot of things on there. If you just want to go and breeze by it and maybe it'll trigger your memory of what I said, I don't know. I'm sorry. But now it's going to get stuck in my head. I might have to go watch my own video. Yeah, you have to go back and check. Were you looking for something in particular that interested you? I, I really don't remember. I'm horrible. I love, I throw things, I have so many wish lists. I have a bunch of private ones that I keep private. Whenever I see, if someone talks about something on YouTube and they're like, hey, check out this stripology ruler, it's the greatest. I will go to Amazon and I will take the stripology ruler and I'll put it in my things to research list. Oh, thanks Jackie. Come on, yeah, watch me make this funky pumpkins. I had fun making funky pumpkins. I've made four, so I still have two more left to make. But I put it in there, and then that way I can go back later and decide, do I really want to get that Yo Nana's ice cream maker? Is that the really the best deal? I can look online and see if maybe you know, Sam's or someone else has it cheaper. By the way, I bought the Yo Nana. Oh, yeah, the memory. Uh, my memory's this is horrible. I did buy the Yonana ice cream maker where you can take frozen fruit and you put it through the Yonana ice cream maker thing and it makes like sorbet, ice cream, whatever you want to call it. I make a whole bunch and then I put it in a Ziploc bag and I put ridges in it with my hand and I put it in the freezer and then I can just break it off and have ice cream whenever I want. It's really good with bananas and then I just put, I had put blueberries through it to make blueberry ice cream, but I found I like it better to just have the frozen bananas and then put whole fruit right on top. It's really good. It cost, I think it cost me $39. It was either $29 or $39. So it was either 30 or 40, somewhere with a three in there. And I, I hemmed and hawed and I left it in that wish list for a while and I thought about it and I thought about it and then I jumped on it. I'm also using it as an Arizona wish list. Not that I want to buy these things from Amazon, but I want that list. Oh yeah, I have I have stacks of rules. We have that's another one of the video things I want to do. So I have I have my square set of rulers that I purchased and then I had to get a new one I, because this one again, uh, the Omni grids, they tend to wear out really on there. So I have those and then I bought the, I bought the creative grids. This is the spider web to make spider web blocks using my um, my salvages. So I picked that up this past summer when I have a little money, when you guys buy things from the Etsy shop and I have a little extra money that it doesn't have to go to like the groceries or the electric bill. I go ahead and pick up some rulers and stuff. I save it up. Or if you got, if I have a really good month where someone bought some like tote bags or a whole bunch of stuff or something, then I go get myself a new ruler. And you guys have sent me a few rulers too. So I have I have the non-slip strippy stars ruler. I have no idea how this works, but I make a lot of stars. So I need to watch the videos on how to make that. Yeah, they do. They multiply quickly when you aren't uh, paying attention. And I also picked up the half square four in one triangle ruler from Creative Grids because we do a lot of half square triangles and stuff in my Patreon group. And this is supposed to make it so much easier to, to trim everything up. And that's just the rulers I have here. I have some other ones I said that I've purchased and other ones that you guys have sent me that are in storage and stuff like that. These are just the ones that I didn't feel comfortable putting into the storage 
due to, to the expense or the size. The other rulers are really small and stuff like that, so I just bundled them up neatly and put them together, and I, I didn't feel like they were going to warp or anything the way I stored them, so I felt confident and comfortable with them. Not that I, you know, don't take care of things if someone gives it to me versus if I purchase it, just to make that clear. I just try to be really careful. But, you know, I keep finding these things. You know what I found? I know. See, Jody, this is what gets me in trouble. We just get rambling. And this is what really synced, synced it for me, cinched it for me. I was going through stuff, and I can Oh, look at the lights on the ruler. My apologies. As I was going through my packages here, and... I made this not that long ago with my patrons, and I loved it, and I haven't even quilted it yet. I just found it sitting in the pile of unfinished stuff. I'm like, you know what? This is what I'm going to work on this weekend after I work on... I have a project bag that I need to make, another one that's been requested that I have to work on. But I, I fell in love with this project, and, and it's just sitting here unfinished. You know, that's just sad. So that's one of the things I want to be able to make sure I have time... To finish all of these things up so I appreciate your patience with me and hopefully everyone understands but I'm gonna let you go so I can clean up this mess yes I have let me show you guys what the Missouri Star in case people oh here's my other rulers too some of them so in case people don't understand what you're talking about these are the rulers I keep on my table all the time because they're small and I love them Okay, so Creative Grids has this little one. See how that frosted there? That's that word. That's on the back in all different places on that stripology ruler, and that's what keeps it from slipping. This one's great because it has that quarter inch line there. That's ah, perfect. I use it all the time. I just dropped one on the floor. You don't need all these rulers, but as time goes on, you just collect them. This came in that package. This is the two and a half inch one. I use these for boxing the corners when I cut them out of my tote bags. Two and a half inches, perfect little ruler, but you don't need it. I won this one online many years ago. This is when I first started learning about creative grids from Quilters Depot. So this one is a great little ruler too, and I use that a lot for small things. It's great for cutting half square triangles and diagonal lines, but here we go. This is the Missouri Star one. I put the medical tape on it to stop it from slipping. Eh, these are really slickery. So you can see Missouri Star in the center there. It's a great little ruler because this one is eight inches long, but again, it's hard to see the fabric through it. So I have a purple mat, purple fabric, and then I put this on it and I'm all out of luck. Oh, sorry, Lucy. Mess, oh guys, I can't handle, this is a mess. It irritates me. I feed the cats and I clean it up right away. At the end of the day, my table needs to be cleared off. It has to be clean. I need a clean space to work in each day when I start. I have the black on one side and yellow on the other. You know what? I don't use it. Don't I? There's black on one side. There's black on the other. I thought I had one. Maybe I don't have one. Jody made me lie. I thought I had black and yellow, but I don't. I lied. Yeah, that's. it is really helpful, they say, to have the two different ones. I, th I thought I had one. I probably have it somewhere. Oh, well, look what else I found since we're rambling, and then I'm going to let you go. I found this at the Dollar Tree. You can get poster board now that comes in these little sheets, and you get six of them in a package. I'm going to put these together to make a little light box for taking pictures of my small pouches and everything. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I love when we can just wander off. Oh, we are definitely more consumers here in the U.S. We're more than willing to spend it. It seems, though, that a lot of things are made in certain places. And then, like, Creative Grid says right on here, made in the USA. 1993 to 2009. That shows how old this ruler is. But it costs more to ship things depending on where it's manufactured, to ship to different countries. And I think a lot of countries don't purchase the same way we do, whether where we purchase from or how much we purchase from. But get some rest. Nope, I've got to clean this mess up, feed all the animals. I think I'm going to have a bowl of cereal for dinner because it's almost 5 o'clock and that's the easiest thing to do. 
and the least amount of dishes. And then I'm gonna sit down and work on that knitting project for Christmas. For those of you that have asked, I have started crocheting the teddy bear dishcloths. I've made one, just made one, because that's how far behind I am, but I'm getting there. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Thank you to everyone who hangs out on the replay. I will see you guys on Wednesday where let's hopefully, I got my time adjusted. Here, let me show you, close your eyes. I'll show you what I'm talking about when I say that, okay, can we zoom out? So I changed my bed to towels because the cats were getting their claws stuck in it. Here is the wall where I'm waiting for the mini quilts to fall down. The wall was covered and there's just a little bit, but this is what you guys are gonna have to look at when I'm doing the live stream. So if you can handle having that in the background, then I will go ahead and turn the camera around the best I can. Otherwise, you're gonna get this look. <laughs> this may be the look you're getting. I Maybe I can adjust it so my head is right here in between those. This was sent by one of you. If you don't recognize it, there's a house on the other side. I flipped it to this side because today I'm in love with that. So thank you guys so much for hanging out and uh, I'll see you on Wednesday, one way or the other. Bye.